Josh, just, you know, generally, what did these past two games do for the confidence of the defense specifically? Um, I think it was important last game just to get a zero on the board, you know, the last two games. You know, I think it's important. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of pressure on the offense lately, but, you know, as far as a, uh, as a collective, you know, I think uh, I've always said it starts from the top and comes back. So, so us, even though we're not scoring, uh, you know, the team defense has been really locked in lately. And that's something that we look to continue. This game, but throughout the rest of the year, switching to a four-three-three seemed to make a lot of a, a pretty big difference. Why do you feel like right now that's kind of suiting the strengths of this team? Uh, for one, Lucas has been out, you know, yeah. so we don't have you know, there's not many guys around the league that can replace that guy. So mm -hmm. um, you know, you just kind of from there you pivot. You know, you bring in a guy like Aiden, who you know, I thought's played you know, incredible the last few games. You know, his energy, his tenacity, um, he just flies around. You know, I'll, I'll pass him the ball. Right side, long ball will be pinged to the left side, and he's picking it up over there. How do you get over there? Um, so just to have that type of energy, um, you know, like I said, tenacity really adds, you know, just a certain toughness to our offense. And you know, not that D and RD aren't tough. It's just you know, you add another guy in there to mix it up, and I think that just raises everybody's uh, you know, intensity level and, and just willingness to kind of get stuck in. And looking forward to tomorrow against New England. They are going through. Some injury issues. They brought in uh, Josie, brought in a lot of new folks on the offensive side of the ball. What are you kind of seeing from them tomorrow, and how uh, the defense is adjusting to them? Um, I think they kind of went through that Concacaf struggle, you know, that we kind of went through last year. So, to me, they're starting to get healthy again. You know, we've we've noticed a few names that have been popping up in training, and you know, I think this is a dangerous team if you don't approach the game the right way, especially in Foxborough. So. Uh, you know, to me, any team, you know, you got Josie coming off the bench, you know, that means there's a lot of talent on that team. So, you know, we know Bruce will have him prepared. Um, you know, they just got a bunch of guys who are, you know, they got some youthful guys who are really athletic, but also mixing that experience and guys who have been around for a while. So, and then you throw in a guy like, you know, Hill in there and, and you know, Boots up top, you know, they just have a complete team. So, to me, even though they're struggling a little bit early in the year, I think this is a, a solid team and one of the best teams in the league. Thank you. Josh, this was really your first substantial minutes with the, the first team <clears throat> this year. Anything you've noticed about this squad that's different from the team last year? What do you feel about the culture, um, the performances that they put on now that you have got nine minutes under your belt? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, there's not, there's not much different from years mm -hmm. past. Um, it's the same core group of guys, but I think, you know, you just add another year of experience, another year in this league, you know, I think, there's so many, there's so many quirks with this league that you know the more experience you could have, you know, the better off you are. And I think a lot of the new guys that come in need some time to adjust. Um, so, to me, as the season goes on, I think guys are starting to get used to the flow of travel, the flow of a game day, you know, the certain playing on turf, you know, different uh, scenarios that pop up throughout the year. So, uh, to me, it's just maturing. You know, I think this is a natural flow of the, of the year. You know, a bunch of guys, like I said, we got Aiden coming in. We got a bunch of young guys that are looking to get minutes. So. Just to kind of figure out who's you know who you can rely on, who can step up, fill in spots when needed. Uh, so to me, you rely on the core group of guys that have been here who have won, and then from from there, it's our job to kind of incorporate everybody and, and, and make sure everybody is, is comfortable with what we're trying to do. Your assist, um, Derek has made that run many times this year. Have you noticed him wanting to stretch the back line, wanting to get in early, and um, how do you play a ball so perfect like that? Uh. <laughs> Close my eyes and swing my leg. <laughs> so he's a, that's the old Patrick Mahomes thing. I know he's up there somewhere, just winging it down there. Uh, no, but it's something that Derek and I had talked about. Uh, and there's certain situations where I always, whether it's a long diagonal or you know that ball over the top, um, to me it's it's a relationship that you have to build out in training. You know, you say, look, if I get a ball, uh, I, I told him if I get a ball either from Pedro, and, and we actually connected on the play, uh, on a similar play the day before. I would tell him if I get a ball and, and I can take a straight touch, you know, that, that, that most likely will have, you know, I can get my steps down and the technique is correct to then, you know, make that, that runner behind. So to me, as soon as Aiden put it down and I took my first touch, I didn't even really need to look. I'd already communicated with Derek. So that's why I think, you know, I'm always telling the younger guys, build those relationships with guys, not only one pass to the side of you, but across the field or maybe a line above this that way. As soon as you take that touch, you know, he already started moving and it's just a matter of, like I said, close my eyes and swing my legs. So. <laughs> I'm sure it's a little more than that. Um, <laughs> last one for me. 
James has come in and really established himself as maybe a key piece in this group going forward this year. What do you like about his style of play and how does it fit in with this team, regardless really of what formation that you guys try to play? Right, I think that last part is crucial. Um, you know, he's a guy that could fill in pretty much anywhere. You know, he's, he's had experience in La Liga. Um, he, he's a quiet guy, but there's a quiet confidence to him. And you can tell that as soon as he touches the ball. And I think that just allows that, that trust in a guy who when he receives it, rather than kind of that, I don't know what he's gonna do, to rather receive it and you could start to open up and, and the natural flow and progression of the offense can, can flow off of him. And I think the more players you have, like a Pam and Darlington is like that, Artur, mm -hmm. you know, we're, 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 Aiden is starting to come into that role. So the more guys you could have on the field where you trust them making the right decision, making the right play, playing the right ball, I think the more guys we have like that, uh, in our midfield and, and in the attack, I think our, our offense is really going to start to take off. So, uh, you know, to me, he's just been an incredible addition. And, and like I said, a, a quiet guy, but a very confident guy. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to have him here. The other day, we were talking to Derek about his goal celebrations and like just kind of his, I don't know, general just vibe on the field. And, and um, I guess, he, and then he was saying, you know, how motivated he is when people doubt him. I, I'm just curious for me, he seems like a really well-liked guy. What, what's he like as a teammate? Um, he said he was motivated by doubt, yeah. you say? Well, he sucks. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, he, um, I mean, that's just Derek, man. What do we know him? He's, he, he's, he's no, normally one of the loudest guys in the locker room. We always jab at him for that. Uh, but to me, it's, uh, you know, there's a certain confidence that you have to have to be, to, to be that way. So to me, um, you know, the more confidence we can give him, the more trust we can put in him, you know, I think he can kind of feed off of that. So to me, after the first game, I sent him a message and basically told him that, like, you know, it's a huge year for him. So, you know, keep your head down, stay you, you know, we're not telling him to be quiet or anything like that. Do what you need to do and, and keep producing. That's the main thing. Yeah. As long as you produce, you can say and do whatever you want. So, yeah. uh, you, you know, but that's just Derek. He's, he's part of the locker room. He's one of our brothers and, and he is who he is. So we're not going to try to change him or anything. He's, you know, whatever he can bring, he, he needs to bring it every game. And like I said, if you produce, you can pretty much do what you want. Yeah, is he a pretty big comedian too? He was saying his, his dad's funny, but he would say he's funnier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's definitely one of the funnier guys on the team. He's, uh, uh, I don't know. to me, our locker room's just so close and, and you know, there's a lot of characters in there. So, and then it's just, it, it's a good vibe. You know, it's a light vibe, no matter if we're up or down. I think, uh, it, it, you know, it's just a locker room where we could always rely on each other to kind of bring some comedic relief when, when necessary. So yeah. he, he, he's a character, but I love that guy. <laughs> um, last thing, just watching Aiden, Artur, and Darlington, they seem to complement each other's games so well. What, what do you notice about why they've kind of seamlessly played well together almost immediately? Oh, I think it's uh, just the mentality, a selfless mentality between all three of them. You know, I think all of those guys could be starters anywhere else, you know, especially Aiden, you know, you got an Aiden who, who's been chomping at the bit just to try to get a, a, a shot, but, mm -hmm. you know, when we're, when we play four in the midfield and anyway, he's, unfortunately, he's right now stuck behind Darlington and Artur, so for him to get this uh, chance and, and, you know, Aiden's like a little brother to me, so I'm always telling him, just, just keep grinding, man, you know, keep grinding to get your chance, that's when, you know, that's when you step into the role and, and, and you take over, and uh, I think Artur and Darlington, I always see him either asking them questions or them kind of pulling him aside and, and uh, mentoring him. So to me, that type of relationship between those three is, is special. And, and, and you can see, I think that's a huge reason why it just it kind of went together seamlessly like that. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, props to Aiden for reaching out and, and, and you know, asking questions and also props to Dee and Artur to, to kind of mentor him through that and, and uh, be available. You know, I think that's a huge step for uh, success in, in a team environment. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh.